Hi everyone. So in this video, I shall be discussing the MCQ solutions of paper CB1 for IFOA April 2022 session. Before we get started with the solutions key for the MCQ, uh, let me just give you overall highlight of the paper. Uh, going through the paper as well as interacting with students, they found this paper to be relatively very easy as compared to the previous sessions. So hopefully this session, uh, the results for CB1 should be better because a lot of students did find them pretty easier compared to the recent years. Also, just to inform you, uh, we would be starting with our online and offline classes for September 2022 session. From May 8 itself, offline classes would be held in Calcutta. The center is located at the heart of the city, just uh, 200 meters near Ravindra Sadhan Metro. The classes would be streamed as well, so students who are not from Calcutta can also you know, attend the online classes. We are planning to take on average four to five classes per week for CM and CS papers. The syllabus obviously would be completed at least one month before examinations begin. So we are targeting to complete the syllabus latest by August 8. Note that uh, video recording shall also be available for, so for students who want to self-paced their course and might not be able to attend the online or the offline classes can take that as well. And they have the option to attend these classes uh, in an online or offline mode as and when convenient for them as well. Do note that we just have a single batch each term for each paper and the admissions are on first come first of basis and we have a maximum batch size. So we do not intake uh, right now more than you know, 50 new intakes for each paper each session. Uh, we do have uh, currently you know, attractive early bird offers as well. So for all of you who are planning to take classes from us for the September term, do join us at the earliest. So this was just details regarding the batches we would be starting. Coming back to the paper, let's take a look at the first question. Which of the following is most likely to seek a micro loan among all the four options? This I would say is a very straightforward question. It should be option D. An unemployed carpenter who wishes to buy basic tools in order to start a small business. So micro loans are very small loan amounts, you know, generally given to let's say self-employed professionals or you know unskilled uh, professionals, which could be you know uh, daily wage laborers or you know. Uh, these type of categories of people. So these are very small size loans. So option uh, for question one, it is option D. Question two, which of the following statements is true of an interest rate swap? So among all the options, option C is the correct one. The parties to the swap effectively make offsetting payments to one another for the swaps duration. So what happens is basically one of them would be paying uh, fixed interest, the other would be paying variable interest rate, and a part of it would be, you know, keep setting, keep getting <coughs> offset. Next question three, a quoted company is making a rights issue. Which of the following statements is correct? So of all of these, it's actually option D, the share price could increase after the issue. Why others might not be right is first one, shareholders are required to exercise their rights. That is not true. Not everyone has to exercise the rights. They can sell their you know, rights as well in case they do not want to exercise it. Second B is the new shares could be issued at a premium to the present market price. That uh, does not really happen because in case of coming up with a rights issue, the prices are generally lower than the market price because if they are then the higher than the market price. Think from the point of view of investor. Why would I want to go and buy from the company at a higher price? I could directly buy it for a lower price available from the market as well. right? So whenever rights issue come up, they are generally at a discount to the current market price. So B is also not correct. Option C, the new issue shares could be issued at a price that is less than the nominal value. So again, that is something which is not allowed. Uh, the new shares cannot be issued at a price, you know, which is less than nominal or the face value. Next question four, a company is obtaining a stock exchange quotation through an offer for sale by tender. Which of the following statements is correct? So if you would remember that in an offer for sale by tender, the investors come and they come up with the prices and the quantities at which they you know want to buy the shares. After all such uh, offers have been made, the company selects one price, uh, say the maximum price it can uh, to you know, offer the total number of shares it is planning to, or that price could be a bit lower as well in case you know they want a large number of uh, applicants you know to be considered. So the point is key once the offers or the tenders for the shares have been made, ultimately all shares are allotted at a single price only. So this option four is nothing but uh, question four is nothing but option B. All shares will be finally issued at the same price. 
moving forward to question 5 a company offers an automatic dividend reinvestment plan which of the following statements is true with regard to the shareholders who are enrolled in this plan so this is option c the new shares will be acquired at a discount okay then question 6 the purpose of an emphasis of matter paragraph in an external auditor's report is to its option a draw attention to a note to the financial statements question 7 which of the following reflects the accruals concept in the preparation of an insurer's financial statements this is option a directly accounting for claim costs and premium in the same period b is not correct because you cannot use pessimistic assumptions you need to use uh, uh, best estimate assumptions okay for the calculation of these or it could be slightly on the prudent side but you cannot directly you know, let's say use pessimistic assumptions that would be wrong c excluding potential claims that cannot be measured objectively that again does not make sense because that could be a major liability for an insurer so you just cannot ignore it just because you cannot measure it objectively d recognizing estimated cost of setting recent claims as expenses that is also no not i would say correct these should be held let's in the form of reserves if you know you want to settle recent claims which have been incurred so it's option a then next Question eight: A parent company owns a single subsidiary that was purchased for cash ten years ago. Which of the following best explains the need to include the goodwill on acquisition of the subsidiary in the consolidated statement of financial position? And the answer is, I would say C. The goodwill was paid for and must be included, or the statement would not balance. Then question nine: Which of the following best describes other comprehensive income? So this is option B: gains that are taken directly to the reserves. and last mcq question which i have is which of the following best describes the attitude that a company should have towards meeting it meeting its competitors information needs when preparing its financial statements so this i would say i found it a little bit tricky you know uh, because i thought two options are very close so option b first of all is wrong competitors have no means of obtaining the financial statements so their interest is irrelevant that is not true when these financial statements are released these can be accessed by anyone the investors the shareholders creditors even competitors anyone it's there in the public domain itself so b is incorrect the information that would assist the competitors should be withheld that is also not true i mean a lot of information could be could assist competitors but it cannot be withheld because certain important information need to be communicated in the financial statements so d is also wrong so a and c you know both looks uh, correct competitors are legitimate users of financial statements that is the case they can use the financial statements so i would say i would be going with option a c also information that is of value to the shareholders is likely to be useful to competitors that is fine it also seems reasonably fine but the question is you know which of the following best describes the attitude i would say uh, it's the first one that competitors are legitimate users of financial statements so i hope you all did find this video useful for uh, the answer key for the mcqs in case you did find this video useful don't forget to uh, like this video and drop a comments as well in case you have any queries don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get updated with all our uh, you know uh, content which we are going to upload so that's it thank you